What's up guys, Justin here with TheCGEssentials.com back with another Blender new feature tutorial for you. So in today's video I'm really excited to get started with particle nodes inside of Blender. So this is a brand new system that they're implementing in the uh, 2.91 alpha version of Blender where we can actually use nodes to create particles and eventually I think it's going to replace the particle system that's currently inside of Blender. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright so same note as always since this is contained in an alpha version of Blender, version 2.91. Um, note that it probably shouldn't be used for any kind of production work and that there's definitely some stability issues using it. However, let's talk through where to get version 2.91. So you want to go to blender.org, click on the download button right here, but then you want to scroll down to download Blender Experimental and you want to look for the option that says Blender 2.91 Alpha. And so honestly, I'm not even 100% sure if they've talked about this uh, this inside of the new features section yet, but you're going to want to download this 2.91 Alpha in order to do this. And then, in order to enable this, you need, you need to enable the experimental functions inside of Blender. So for example, if I go to Edit Preferences, you need to go into the interface section and you need to check the box for developer extras. So if you check the box for developer extras, you're gonna get a little box down here that says experimental. If you click on that, you can check the box for the new particle system. And so what that'll do is that'll enable this inside the UI so that you can play around with it. Again, notice that this is a little bit unstable right now, um, but for what we're doing right now, I think, uh, but it's still kind of fun to play around with and see what's coming up. So you can also click on this little button right here. So that'll take you to the developer page where they're talking a little bit about some of the development that's happen happening. So the different features that are currently being worked on, other things like that. So again, this is pretty new. There's not a whole lot of resources out there about this just yet. But then what we need to do is we need to now access the new simulation the simulation workspace. So you can click this drop down right here and notice how there's a button for simulation editor. What that's gonna do is that's gonna take you into a node editing viewport right here. Probably instead of doing this, what I would do is I would click the little plus button right here and create a new viewport and name it simulation. So in this case, I'm just going to go to general and we'll just go to general layout for right now. What that's going to do is that's going to pop up a window with a 3D viewport. And then, and so we'll go ahead and we'll add a window down here and we'll just click on this and move it over to simulation editor. That's going to give us a new workspace that we can work in. We can just name this simulation. So then that'll be contained inside of this version of Blender. So it's kind of like my shading editor right here, but this one is specifically designed to be for simulations. And so the way this works is it works a lot like the node editor for the shading editor, right? So what we want to do is we want to click the plus button down here to create a new simulation. So now we've created a simulation. Notice how it has a name right here. And we can do a shift A just like we could, um, just like we can with the shading editor in order to access the different uh, particle simulation nodes, right? So these are all things that either do something or are going to do something having to do with the nodes. So in this situation, we want an output node. It's going to be a particle simulation node. And if we look at this, you can see how this has three inputs in it that we'll talk about in a second. And so what we want to do is we want to assign these to an object inside of our model. But what we need to do is we don't want to assign these to an object. What we want to do instead is we want to do a shift A. And if you scroll down, notice how there's now an option in here for point cloud. The point cloud is going to be the object that creates your simulation, right? So all of the things that are being simulated are going to be created by this point cloud object. And so what we want to do in this situation is we want to go over to our modifiers. We want to add a simulation modifier. So the simulation modifier is going to be something that we can apply to this point cloud in order to link it to our node right here. And so notice how when we do that, it asks us for a simulation. So which simulation to access as well as a data path. So let's start by just clicking in here and the simulation that we created should be on this list. So if I click on it, 
then this is now going to reference this simulation. But if we were to play this right now, it's not going to do anything, right? And the reason for that is because we haven't given it a data path. And so the data path is going to be which object in here this should access and link to your point cloud. So in this situation, we need to take this name and copy paste it and put it over here. So we're just going to do a control C, click in here and do a control V so that this knows to access the particle simulation node that's in here. And so now let's go ahead and save our model. So you need to save your model a lot when you're doing this, just because it's not super stable right now, you don't want to lose the work that you've done. This definitely does get a lot easier as you work, but redoing work is never fun. And so right now, if I click play, you're going to notice that nothing is going to happen, right? And the reason for that is because we don't have any inputs contained inside of our particle simulation. So nothing to tell it what to do. And so what we want to do is we want to do a shift A, we want to go down to emitters, and we want to add a particle mesh emitter. So if we click in here and add this particle mesh emitter, you're going to notice that you're going to get an emitter in here and notice how these are colored. And so you want light colors to go with light colors, right? So in this case, we want an emitter to go into this box right here or this dot right here. So just drag between here and here in order to set that up. And so it's still not going to do anything yet. So if I reset my simulation, notice how there's still nothing in here. The reason there's nothing in here is we also need to give it an object around which to emit. So in this situation, so the point cloud object is where things are actually, um, where your uh, output goes. So your actual generated geometry is going to go in here, but you need to give it an input so that it knows where to put um, all of the particles that it's going to create. So in this situation, we're going to click here and then click on our object. So now if we reset our simulation and hit play, you're going to notice that this is emitting particles around my plane, or in this case, my Bonnie object at a rate of 100. So if I click play and look at this, you can see how this is just emitting little particles. And so from here, we're going to do more to this, but just notice how um, this is emitting these at this current rate. And you can adjust the rate as well. So let's say I was to bring this down to like one or something like that. You're going to notice that once I bring this down to one, this is going to emit a lot less particles. So the particles are being emitted based on the rate that you have in here. So if I was to type a value of 50 while this simulation is running, this is going to generate particles at that rate. So you can use this to adjust how many particles are in here. And so you can't really see it right here um, unless I have my point cloud selected. So let's jump over into, into solid mode. That way you can see these. But notice how if I move my Bonnie model around, because those particles are linked to my Bonnie model, they're going to follow Bonnie around. So it's like the Bonnie model is what's actually emitting the particles. And so that in its most basic way is how you can generate the particles. However, you also have two other options in here that allow you to affect the way that the particles are going to act. So the first is going to be events. And so let's say that we were to add an event object in here. There's actually a lot of options in here that have mockup next to them. So what mockup means is that these are things that are being put in here so they can get an idea of the way that these menus are going to come together, but they're not active yet. So anything that says mockup is not an active tool yet. But in this case, what we have is we have events that we can link to our events um, output inside of our particle simulation. So for example, let's say that we wanted a age reached event. So what we could do is we could tell this to at a cert at a certain age to do something, right? But if we were to drag this over into our events, nothing would happen, right? Because we've basically told this at an age of three, nothing, right? We've just said to check these at an age of three. Well, what we could do is we could do a shift A and then under execute, we could click the option for like set particle attribute or kill particle. So kill particle, you can take your event. And so if you add a kill particle item and put the execute into the execute, basically what this is going to do is this is going to get rid of the particles at a certain age. So you can use this, for example, to limit how far out these particles go. So um, at an age of three, they're not really changing all that much. But if you were to set your age reached event to something like 0.5, 
hit the enter key. Notice how your particles are only going out a little ways before this kill particle is getting rid of them. So you can link different things in here in order to do that. And so one thing to note about this is, let's go ahead and set our age range event back to three. But now you can have multiple objects going into an event for, um, for our particle nodes. So for example, right now we've got our kill particle set up. We could add another event in here so we could call this one a particle birth event. Particle birth event is basically going to be something that we do when the particles are created, right? So if I click and drag this across right here, and then I go down to execute, I can tell it to execute a condition, or in this case, we can set a particle attribute. And so what set particle attribute is going to do is that's going to allow us to set something about this attribute. So we could drag this execute in here and notice how right now it's not really doing anything, right? But you can set this to have different things in here like colors or vectors or objects, other things like that. Um, but for right now, it's not going to do anything, right? So if I set my float to one, notice how it's not doing anything having to do with these particles right now. That's because we haven't typed a name in here. So we're not telling it which attribute about our particles to change. And so I will say the only thing I've really seen people do with this one up to this point is enter a value of radius. So if you were to type radius in here and hit the enter key, what that's going to do is that's going to set the radius to the value of your float right? So whenever it creates a particle, it's going to set them with a value of one, or if you were to type 0.5, then it would create this with a radius of 0.5. So you can use this to adjust the size of your particles that are in here. I don't know if this works for any other values or not. I tried typing color in here and it crashed. So um, I think there's going to be more particle attributes that we can adjust in the future. But for right now, the only one that I know of that's working is radius. So if you know more, please leave a comment in the notes down below and let me know. But so in addition to being able to set events, we can also generate forces. And so what forces are is forces are environmental actor or uh, environmental factors that are going to affect the way your particles act. So for example, you could do a shift A under forces, you can add a force, right? And so our force is going to go from blue to blue, and you can adjust the directions in which these forces are applied. So if I was to type in a value of one, for example, you're going to notice that the particles are going to go off to one side because it's going to apply a force in one direction. Um, a value of 10 would make this much more pronounced, right? So we can use this in order to set particles that are moving in one direction or multiple different directions by affecting this value, right? So you can set this to emit particles in a certain direction. One application a lot of people use on this is entering a uh, negative value right here which is going to make your particles look like they're falling, right? So I can set this where particles fall in a certain direction. And so one thing that you could do to tie these two things together is let's say I was to add a plane in here. Well, right now these are falling through my plane. Well, you could set your age event so that these only fall until they get about to the ground like this. So you could make this look like these are falling and getting blocked by the ground. So you could um, couple like your kill particle with your forces in order to do that. So another thing I've seen is I've seen people apply a um, object transform node and use the location of that object to affect the direction that these particles are going, right? So let's say I was to add, let's duplicate my Bonnie model right here. And we'll go ahead and set our particle age back to three for right now. But what you could do is you could set this object to the Bonnie model right here. And then wherever you move your Bonnie model, um, the particles are going to be attracted to that model. So you can use this to create an animation where the particles follow an object around. And another thing you could do with this is you could also keyframe different spots. So let's say for example that I was to pause this for a second and let's say that we were to keyframe the Bonnie location, right? So we'll go ahead and keyframe these. There's probably an easier way to do this, but that's okay for right now. So then if we were to play this animation like this, your Bonnie model would move around 
and your particles would follow that around as well. So you can keyframe everything in your animation while having this linked up in order to create some really interesting applications. All right, so one other thing that we can do is let's say that we don't just want our particles in here, right? Because if I run this particle system right now, um, even with this box, without this box selected in a material preview mode, you can't actually see anything because it's just creating little particles, right? You can click on this here, but you can't actually see them. Well, let's say you want these particles to actually be linked to an object. So let's say you want this to create real objects inside of your model. Well, what you can do is you can do a shift A and add an object. So in this case, we're gonna add a torus like this. And so what we wanna do is we first we want to select our torus and then do a shift click and select our particle system and we want to do a control p to parent this to our point cloud right so we want to set the parent to object well, then if you go down into your object properties and scroll down to instancing you can set this instancing to points and so what that's going to do is that's going to generate actual geometry in here based on those particle locations. So let's say that I wanted these to be a little bit bigger. We'll set these to like 0.1 and then rerun our simulation. So now notice how these particles also have a little torus associated with them. And you could also, if you didn't want to come down here and set your particle attribute, you could also scale this up, make it a little bit bigger as well. So then if we run this, this is now going to generate all of these little torus shapes in here. And so one thing I have not figured out yet, um, I think it has to do with the baking of your particle system right now, is right now these these will show up in your preview rendered mode right here. So if I was to add, let's say, like a light or something like that, move it up, and let's give it some power. You can see how these will show up inside of this mode right here, but if you actually export this to a render, it doesn't work. I think you need to bake this somehow, but I'm not 100% clear on how. So like I said, this is still in development. So obviously there's still some things happening that uh, need to be figured out, but you can at least use this to create these objects inside of your particle system inside of Blender. So at the moment, this is obviously a feature in development. It's in the alpha version of Blender, but go give it a try. Let me know what you think. Uh, think about some applications that are out there. There's some crazy videos out there with some people using the system to create some things using some complex math. And uh, maybe we can get into something like that in the future. But leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. And I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.